This video was brought to you by Stoinberg, Abed Root Planner, Mr. Green, Ken Power, and Marcus Beal. What's up? We're now sitting in the Hyundai Ioniq 6 and in this video I'm gonna do the driving impressions. Yes, I haven't done it in a while now and try to summarize everything I found out about this Ioniq 6. So yeah, the first thing we have to do is go home, settings, vehicle, uh, speed limit, Click it. Off. Oh, that's good. Okay, we use the map here. Let me see, I have to check if the, the exposure looks okay in the back there. Uh, yeah, I think so. Wait, what if I, can I turn off this individually? Nine? Okay. I think that's it. Yeah, let's go. <clears throat> so yeah, this is the rear wheel drive one, by the way which is uh, quite fun to drive. It's fairly light for, I guess, uh, a big battery and some soundproofing. Let me see, I uh, have to press this one, okay. And then get over there. Let's try the, the automated systems. So here you, you tap this once to, to increase by one, and then you press and hold to increase or decrease by five. No, no, 10, sorry, 10, yeah. But I, I feel like I have to press and hold a long time. So I prefer this manually. You can let the car change speed limit based on uh, sign recognition, but uh, I prefer doing it manually. But many times I, I press and hold and then I release and then, okay, this time it 
it went fairly fast. But sometimes I feel like I have to press and hold a long time before it changes speed for me. But that's just nitpicking, okay? But you can hear that. This is a very nice and quiet ride, oh yeah. Okay, we are on fairly fast, fresh asphalt, but still. That's the first thing I noticed, like, whoa. Quiet ride, really quiet. It, it is similar to, um, actually, e-tron EQC, BMW iX1, you know? Something like that. And, um, uh, what the, oh, oh, there's some road construction over there. And also, the ride is really good. It, it's comfy, it, it's softer than Tesla, that's for sure. Even softer than, I mean, Tesla, softer than Tesla Model 3, but also even softer than Tesla Model uh, S. Uh, it has incredibly comfy ride, but also, it's not boat. It's, um, I don't know how to explain this. It's nice and firm for this kind of car, you know? It's not too bold, but also at the same time comfy. It actually, this, this kind of ride resembles BMW i4, the way it goes over bumps, and I guess because it has a nice and long wheelbase, you know? So I really like the way it rides. You see here are some bumps? Boom, boom, yeah, just, and then, okay, and then it bounces a little bit, but it doesn't, it doesn't do any weird bounce that annoys me. So, uh, let me see. Okay, I'm normally I'll just go over here. So that's what I'm also gonna do now. But yeah, it weighs a little bit over 2,000 kilograms. It's, it's, uh, I guess it's fairly light since it's the rear wheel drive version. But uh, I find it nice and and uh, how do you put this? Um, maybe sporty or, or fun to drive. So now I'm just gonna go around here. Okay, and then go around here and then floor it <laughs> you see the car is playful huh it allows a little bit of wheel spin i like it i like it look here oh that's a classic ionic <laughs> bye bye yeah so it is actually fairly quick for rear wheel drive yeah okay let's go back here again and okay, I'm actually just using the regular mode. I don't have a mode button there. It's the, it's the normal mode. If you go to sport mode, the, the response becomes a little bit sharper. So, but that's pretty much it. So I'm normally just using the normal mode now. So now we're gonna use the adaptive cruise control uh, thing again. Uh, auto steer, okay. And then he also has, um, yeah, yeah, now, <laughs> this is somewhat random. It has auto lane change. Okay, wait. Like lane type, not support. Yeah, but I was about to say, it's quite random whether it works or not. Suddenly it's just lane type, not supported. Uh, okay, let's try again. Now it works. The slow clap. Oh, okay, okay. Well, let's slow down here a bit. And then let's try again to change lane. Lay, road type, not support, but yeah, this is exactly what I mean by random, because for example, in a Tesla or a, a Mercedes, uh, if you can, if you have the lane change option, you will have the lane change option. There's no, like now it's grayed out. The, I, I can, yeah, the, the icon is grayed out. Uh, okay. I guess it doesn't support these kind of roads. <laughs> but um, a little complaint is that it might be hard to see it from the camera from over there, but when I'm using uh, the, the auto steer, the car is a little bit Asian. It will do some micro adjustments left and right. It's not that much. Uh, you don't no notice it that much, but at least I notice it. So I, I think most people might not notice it and they probably don't care. But at least when it comes to the power and the region and you know, it has that smooth ride. Unlike Chinese cars, Chinese cars will kind of trot, I mean, will, will accelerate a little bit and then let off and then accelerate a little bit. And then it would do that constantly. Plus the Chinese cars will do this more. I just came from a Neo EL7 now and it was crazy how the Chinese auto steer works. This one is not that much, but a little bit. So yeah. Uh, other than that, um, well, I should mention that it is really, really efficient, but not as efficient as Model 3. But also, you have to keep in mind, this is heavier than Model 3. 
probably has a little bit more soundproofing and also uh, it is longer 16 centimeters longer than model 3 and you you notice it in the near the back seat area but the trunk is actually worse than model 3 slightly less banana boxes but uh, the back seat is way bigger and I feel like also well I haven't done my homework but I mean I can almost feel it that the wheelbase here is longer than model 3 so um, uh, when it comes to charging this thing charges like a boss it can hit well okay um, as long as it doesn't Colgate it can hit 233 kilowatt uh, as long as the battery is hot enough yeah and it also has this nice and flat charging curve and it's 800 volt system but the, it, the whole high power charging thing has nothing to do with 800 volt uh, really it's just um, a way to uh, well I mean to, to, in my personal opinion it's just 800 volt is just a hype because you can achieve the same performance with a 400 volt system also like BMW, iX, I, iX, i4, EQS, Tesla but okay at least it's, it's future proof since it's a 800 volt system but um, the problem is that it has preheating for fast charging but it works somewhat random so it will like the way I understand it when I navigate to a fast charger sometimes it preheats sometimes it doesn't but uh, supposedly if you navigate to an end point somewhere then the car might pick some charging stations and then it will supposedly preheat every time just like a Mercedes did before but then now they change it so the Mercedes when you navigate to a fast charger it will preheat uh, I think they should change this one so uh, the, the Ioniq 6 and I guess the rest of the Korean cars also so that uh, as long as you navigate to a fast charger it will preheat regardless because Tesla is doing it Mercedes is doing it BMW is doing it Polestar Volvo is doing it uh, I think also some of the Korean uh, some of the uh, Chinese cars are doing it so why not do it like the rest of the car industry is doing it right but here on these bumpy roads oh it is heaven to drive around with the Ioniq 6 uh, over these potholes okay maybe I, I won't purposely run over potholes but at least <clears throat> let me just um, oh yeah uh, let me go here by the way this section is quite bumpy like something weird happened for the last six months I remember when I came home uh, after going to Thailand for three months and I was just shocked of how bad the, the road conditions in this area is but also in general in, around um, uh, Oslo but especially around Arnabru it's just it's just full of potholes you see here and bumps and uh, yeah, they're a freaking pothole you have to avoid it here you have to drive slalom between the potholes uh, but fear no more because with the Ioniq 6 it just floats over the bumps you can see it and you can see the camera is not shaking violently if this was a Model 3 for example so that is actually one of the strongest points with this Ioniq 6 is that the comfort the ride and the, the soundproofing is really really good um, but let me go back here I want to try the big and hug uh, uh, yeah speed bumps but okay let's go back here um, take a little uh, turn around here see you see all these potholes and bumps oh it just oh yeah floats over them oh so like, like I I almost feel like we are driving a German car you know the German cars they they were probably not this great f for uh, for many years many years ago actually I don't know I had a I had the BMW e61 I don't remember how it was but at least nowadays when I try German cars they tend to have the same uh, advantages I'd say uh, the, cons the the suspension is is comfortable but at the same time also um, sporty uh, not too much both maybe okay except for EQS but at least when it comes to BMW and Audi they have this nice and comfy ride uh, and it doesn't bounce too much you see here oh it it has the perfect firmness and the, and the perf the way they have tuned the suspension right that's what I'm saying in the German cars 
and the, the soundproofing in the German cars is very similar to this Ionic 6. But if you ever drove the, the classic Ionic, the 28 kilowatt Ionic, you will feel that, oh, it's, it has this weird bounce. It has poor soundproofing. And it's actually not that great. Also, the steering wheel in the Ionic 6 is, is big, I remember, but it, it's not as nice and, and has this soft uh, uh, surface like this one. So I feel like this Ionic 6 is a big upgrade over the classic Ionic, for example. And when it comes to Ionic 5, Ionic 5 is a little bit softer. It's slightly more bold, but also really good. But in my opinion, I like the Ionic 6 better because I'm more like a sedan guy. I'm not more. I'm not so much of a SUV guy, but then I wouldn't call Ionic 5 an SUV. Oh, it's a black cat. Oh, shit. A black cat crossed the road in front of me. Oh, shit. That means bad luck. Okay. Something's gonna happen with Tesla, I know. Okay, let me see. Let's see, get over here. Uh, uh. Is it? Oh, nice. Oh, yeah. Okay, okay. Big and hug. Speed bumps. Oh, this is like the reference test, right? I mean, ha what the heck, man? Okay, it has this. Okay, okay. It has this little jump, all right? So, uh, in all fairness, what, what the heck, man? What, why is it so big? Why do you guys have so many cars over here in Big and Hogue? Look at that. MG and shit. All right. Backup camera, pretty good. 360 camera, nice. But okay. Uh, but still, just to point this out that when I go over these bumps, this, this, this car does not act like an EQS or an i7 when I do this. Yeah, EQS, you would not bounce at all, almost. It would just, boom, I don't know. EQS is just magic. Yeah, but this is still a Korean car, but it, it is really, really good. Wait, what, what's that? What's up? What are you doing? Wait, that, 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 that looks scary. Wait, what, what are you doing? Shit. Oh, he's going, oh, he's going in there. Okay, okay. Man. Oh, I don't know what the heck he's doing. Okay. <coughs> But you have this delay here, you see? You floor it, uh, and then the delay comes. And then, okay, you can, let's switch over to sport then, okay. Okay, in sport, it, it is more responsive. Yeah, so that's good. I like that sound also. There's a little, there's a little you know, let me, let me show you again. Well, actually, then I change my mind, I go this way. Look at, look at, full of bumps, no problem. Oh, speed bumps, how about that? Oh, no problem. Oh, yeah, oh. Oh, look at, yeah, I'm not, I purposely don't turn on the thing because I just wanna give you guys the feel of uh, the, the sound it makes over the bumps. Okay, since we're nitpicking, the sound it makes when it goes over the bumps, um, it doesn't have the deep sound as a German car. Same when they open and close the door. Yeah, so it's still not right there, but it's really, really close. Yeah, you see here? Okay, I'm gonna get, get in there. Right. See here, there's a, there's a fossil car coming there. Oh, it's a fat, no, fat eater. Yeah. Okay, okay, he's like, what the heck is that idiot doing? Whoa, whoa, what the heck is this? Ring three Simpsons, oh, oh, oh. oh man. Um, Closed roads and shit. Um, okay, change my mind. Go this way instead. Yeah, they closed some stuff over there. So uh, ring three is closed. Okay, this is the problem driving at the night. That is that some some roads might be closed because of Baustelle. No, actually, I, I think it's not Baustelle. It's just um, it's probably just some uh, maintenance. But um, yeah, I mean, but is everything awesome with this car? No, because the trunk solution is bad in my opinion. <laughs> Um, wait, what the heck? Okay, 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 they closed the tunnel. Uh, doesn't affect me, this point this way. The trunk solution is not good at all. Um, this car is very spacious. It has a front even, that's good. It has plenty of space in the back seat, yeah. But the trunk, uh, 
I mean, it works for us uh, now that we have a baby that is almost one year. So we have, we don't use the, the you know, when it, com when it comes to the baby stroller thing, I, I don't need to use that baby, uh, no, the, 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 oh, what the heck? You're supposed to use auto stair. Come on. Well, it just gave up auto stair on me. O okay, that's weird. That is quite random. Yeah, now it works. Yeah, but I'm not using that big, um, uh, carry cot anymore. I'm using the smaller one. So that's good because it doesn't take up so much space because I think the big one that, you know, newborn until six months, they use this um, carry cot will probably not fit very well in the back here. But the seat pack that I use, the smaller one, fits here along with the stroller. But that's pretty much it because the trunk is tiny, uh, not very flexible. And you can have a nice, I mean, a big car, of course. Yeah, great. But um, sometimes you also need okay trunk space. And also this one, at least I feel like it's a bit uh, not optimal the way uh, the, the head room here. I mean, for me, it works. Yes. But I would imagine that for, oh, it's going to turn red now. I imagine that for some other people who is taller than me, it could be a problem. The way I see it's shaped here. Maybe it would be better if you get this glass roof. Yeah, maybe that one. Because I, I, don't, I don't have the glass roof here. Typically, when I get press cars, you just get what you get. Yeah, I can't spec that. Oh, I want, I want glass roof. I want 17-inch uh, wheels. I want, you know, I just get whatever I get in the press cars. That's the way it works. They just buy and spec one. Uh, and then I just get it. But um, uh, what else is it? Um, yeah, one thing... I find weird is that for, to adjust, well, they are cleaning and stuff, that's my noise, okay. But to adjust left and uh, to adjust the mirrors, normally you, you expect something to be here in the door, but it's not, it's actually down here, which is a little bit clumsy. You just have to know where it is. Uh, <laughs> and sometimes I might want to look at the mirrors while I do it, but then I have to go back and look behind the steering wheel to find the buttons. Just a little bit unusual to have it there. Because normally in most other cars, you will have it on the side here by the door. But they wanted to make the door stuff here look really clean. They even move the controls for windows to be here instead in the center console here rather than on that side. So um, in my opinion, I think they Hyundai might have pulled the whole design thing a little bit too far because the door pockets also on the in the front here feels a bit tight really I, i'm struggling sometimes to put some bottles in there uh insulate the bottles and some other stuff most other cars i test nowadays they have nice and open side pockets so yeah but i like this bridge design here that's really good you can put a lot of stuff under here you have uh, Actually, the glass, I mean, the cup holders here in good position. Some cars, they have cup holders in a really awkward position. But here, it's natural. You can just, like this, you know, no further explanation. Here, we also have a nice um, wireless charging pad. Uh, let me see if I can make it slide. Okay, maybe for, for normal driving, you shouldn't be able to trigger. And it's like, I think I, I, I did something once and it slid uh, sideways let me let me see if i can uh, provoke it <laughs> okay maybe there, there 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 exactly i was just hammering it and the phone now slides slightly sideways uh, okay let me see but i think on the normal driving nothing's gonna happen but <laughs> but it's just a little bit weird because most other wireless charging slots there is typically something that holds it in place so it doesn't slide like that but here let me just show you here um so, look look that wasn't even that hard driving this is exactly what i noticed that the phone tends to slide around all the way. let me let me move it back no, no, wait, wait, I need to break to, let me see, let me see, calculating. There, there, okay, kind of. Yeah, so <laughs> that was a little bit weird. I, I, okay, now I'm actually purposely trying to make it move around, but when I was driving just normal, 
in roundabouts and stuff, right? Especially roundabouts, because roundabouts, you have to do zoop, lots of stuff like that. Then it tends to slide around. I was like, huh, what, really? <laughs> so, uh, but also I should tell you that the navigation here feels and looks really old fashioned, the way it works right there. Um, but at least when you search for something, wait, when you search for something here, you can misspell stuff and it will still find it. I remember I, I searched for Ionity, Specero, and I misspelled a lot of shit. It still found it when you press OK. So, wait, what is that? Bus, uh, bus 3. OK. But yeah, in general also, I think the whole... This, this, uh, let me see if you can see it. Yeah, you can see it. I think this infotainment here screams uh, 2016. It's um, because this is more or less like it was before. They have done small improvements, but the base design has not changed. And when I sit in a BMW i4 or even the, the poor man's BMW, the iX1, uh, right? Or when I sit in a Tesla or um, let me see, I have to find some not too expensive cars, otherwise the people is going to cry. But many, many cars I test nowadays, a Polestar, for example, right? Uh, they have way more modern uh, user interface and apps. And this one, yeah, and it, it's, it, it is a bit clumsy in many things. Like for example, okay, I, I made a hotkey here for EV. And then here, okay, we see electric vehicle stuff. And you click here and you can go to uh, it's so weird. You have a, a menu button here, and then you also have a cogwheel here. Okay, uh, for, for some other settings, EV settings. Okay, uh, but then this menu here will uh, open up for some more stuff. Display of energy information and some other stuff. If you go to energy information, you see some, uh, I don't know, uh, really. It's just a charge limit, you see. So it's a little bit weird that. Yeah, well, it's it's energy information, but it's actually uh, a place where you can change charge limit. But how how would you guess that that was the place to change charge limit, right? You just have to know it. And then if you press again, you can then go to energy consumption. And now you can see the, this. We we are using so many kilowatt for driving. We have what, how much how much for, how much for climate? How much goes into electronics like lights and? electric seats and then we have battery care which is cooling or heating on the battery but it requires many clicks yeah you have to click once here and then once here and then once here and then once here and then another time here and there you get it so that's just one example that i think the user interface is a little bit clumsy and sometimes uh, hard to operate and also how is this again Many cars nowadays, they have a pull-down menu, like the MEB cars, or, or, or um, yeah, this one just has this swipe screen like this, and you have, yeah, you don't really have that, but you have those, those buttons, and here, uh, but no pull-down here, no side pull there, so uh, those cars, they will typically, you can slide down, and you can add hotkeys for stuff, like, uh, for example, preheating, keep climate on, right? or um, turn on off uh, head-up display or stuff like that. And speaking of that one, this car also does not have a keep climate on or, okay, I don't expect them to have camp mode. Well, actually it has camp mode. It's called utility mode. The only problem is that it, it the utility mode, you have to be parked naturally, but it will keep the climate and electronics on, but you can then not lock the car from outside over from the key fob unless you lock the car with the manual key which is a bit clumsy so it, it is as if they have designed it to not be used for uh, whatever like other cars can like tesla or even the korean cars a uh, neo el7 that i test nowadays i guess other neos will also have it neos for some reason or uh, for i don't know it is uh, a coincidence neo has a power on mode or something power keep power something mode which is the same as climate keep climate on in tesla they have a pet mode which is dog mode in tesla and they also have a camper mode and tesla calls it camp mode <laughs> yeah but this one does not have this 
keep climate on which many many other cars have they call it in in um, uh, in many cars it's preconditioned now for example right uh, I don't I think it was in the MEB cars uh, ID3 ID4 you can just swipe down and then precondition it will run it for half an hour BMW it's also called uh, I don't remember it's same thing there you know you pull it down and then precondition or something or you can do it other places a Mercedes even has a button physical button you can press and they will keep the climate on for half an hour this one doesn't have it so um, I, I feel like feature wise this i7 uh, might be lacking some no, sorry, not i7 sorry uh, Ionic 6 <laughs> sorry I've been testing so many cars lately but I feel like the Ionic 6 might be a little bit behind in some features that more more of the competition has already but um, what is important with the Ionic 6 is that it is really uh, efficient it is actually fun to drive it's comfortable uh, it has good soundproofing so if you consider if you can compare this one versus Model 3 but keep in mind the Model 3 is cheaper uh, but then Model X is way more expensive but at least versus Model 3 uh, the Ionic 6 is more comfortable comfortable and it has better soundproofing and also uh, at least firmer seat almost too firm for my taste but at least it has um, uh, ventilated seats but maybe I should just go over here so let me see uh, yeah let's go move them it's just green for a little bit only yeah. come back here there's a fossil trying to outrun me <laughs> okay let me slow down a little bit Achtung, Achtung. Yeah, all right. So, um, yeah, and what else should I say? In 1,000 km challenge, it did not, um, it did not do it that well. Not as good as I expected because the um, the preheating didn't always start. It was really confusing for me to figure out it. And you say, oh, Bjorn, you're a noob. You know, I like your videos, but well, if it's confusing for me, can you imagine how confusing it is for regular users? They should at least fix the software so it works like other cars. So, but at least it, it did it in a good time. I don't exactly remember how fast it was, but it was still pretty fast. Yeah, and I it's, imagine that, yes, as long as it's warm enough outside, then you will get a pretty good time. But it wasn't, it wasn't uh, outstandingly fast, unfortunately, but I also didn't expect that. But yeah, so um, what else should I say? Uh, you guys probably want to know the good things and the bad things about the Ionic 6. And... Um, to be in all fairness, I think it's a it's a very good car, but I feel like it, it has some some disadvantages here and there. Yeah, that it depends, of course, if if it if it's important for you or not. For example, the trunk, like I mentioned, or some of the weird design. Oh yeah, I should mention also the the, the speakers, the sound system. At least this one, the Bose system, didn't sound that great. And also, I feel like there's. A little bit too much hard plastic here like even the model 3 has softer materials so yeah well let me let me go over here i changed my mind i'm gonna go over here just want to try the bumps again but oh when it comes to suspension i i, I can never get enough of the, the ride this car is and also it we are now in sport mode it feels uh, nice and quick so so but it's still a fun car to drive and yeah and i think you if you order this car, I'm, I'm you're not sure whether you should buy it or not. Uh, first of all, there must be a reason why you chose to order an Ionic Six. Oh, and at least the 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 downsides or the negative things I found about this car is not a deal breaker. That oh no, you know you shouldn't buy this car because yeah. So so I'd say if you order it go for it or if you even consider it versus some other cars you should definitely try the Ionic 6 but because I, I can't tell you that this is the perfect car for you you have to try it yourself you might like it or you might not like it but it is worth a, a car worth trying really and it's, it's a very impressive car in many ways but um, I also feel like it is a little bit too hyped up All right okay it's not it's not the, the best ever car made 
design wise function wise and everything it, it's just yeah that's the that's the thing i'm not saying this because oh i'm a tesla farm boy it's just i'm just trying to be as honest as possible because if i'm lying i'm trying to bullshit and and try to make other favorite brands look better eventually you guys gonna find out so that's why i'm trying to be as honest as possible and my impression after driving this car for uh, many days now is that um yeah it is <laughs> i feel like it's a little bit hyped up that's it but when it comes to the look i like the butt of it the front though i'm not the big fan of so yeah oh but oh yeah look at this huh huh do you like that shit? <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, we are now on uh, Continental Bike in Contact the tires, so they are a little bit uh, soft. Uh, let me just go over here, uh, do a little driving impression stuff. And also, one thing I like is that I like this um, pedal, this uh, pedal here. You can change region. Yeah, and you can also set it to, to to max region, and you can also well, even if you are in some of the other regions, if you press and hold the left side here, you then activate maximum region temporarily until you release it then it goes back to the whatever region level you have so yeah it's nice okay it adds extra complexity adds some cost adds some weight but i like it yeah and also i'm actually a fan of some buttons but i'm also a fan of um of touchscreen but it depends what it is because if if you have a good touchscreen where for example HVAC settings are always visible at the bottom and it's easy to operate it and when you click something it will do whatever it's supposed to do well it will do what you want it to do right what you intended to do then that's a good system uh, I have used some systems uh, I think it was the Neo EL7 actually uh, where the the HVAC or the temperature climate temperature is on the bottom but many times when I press the bottom to increase temperature instead of increasing it by half degree it brings up the temperature i was like no that was not wrong that i just wanted to increase it so that one could be tuned better uh, just redefine the touch screen area a little bit so it becomes better to easier to do whatever you're supposed to do uh but yeah <laughs> because then you can have uh, with touch screen you can you can actually create a better user interface and if you have a big, big touch screen you can you know do more uh, and make easier menus than this 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 i don't know what to call this thing here uh, old-fashioned uh, multi-layer menu system yeah this is what it is it just you have to dig into click uh, click on ev Oh wait, huh? No, no, sorry. What, 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 what happened now? Click on EV. Wow, and then the lag. Yeah, it was not as laggy before. I remember Kia or something, uh, the older ones. They were not as laggy as today's uh, Korean cars. I don't know what the heck happened. But you see her. Okay, click on EV. Click here. Like there's so many layers that you have to go through, like map and wait for the lag and then search and then wait what about the recent uh, oh you have some of the stuff here yeah so okay and then but then oh and then well, I forgot blah, 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 blah. yeah but okay just just to show you that uh, I find the whole thing here they could be better but my point was that I like buttons <clears throat> as long as you don't have to um, you don't have to look for the buttons. You know where they are, right? For example, stocks, blinker stocks, or the, the shifter pedals, or the cruise control. You, you don't have to look. You know where they are. But if you have these buttons here, for example, uh, if you want to turn on the camera, let me see if I can do it without looking at the button. No, I, I have to look at the button. And there, there's the camera button, you see? Then, because the whole argument against touchscreen is that, oh, but buttons, you can you can press them without looking. Well, but I couldn't find the camera button without looking at it. So then it might as well be a soft button on the touchscreen, 
right? <laughs> That's my point. But but as long as you have buttons near where your uh, hands are, and they are actually easy to access, and you you know where they are, you learn how they are, then that's actually good. So I think a val a balance between some buttons and and a touchscreen is the best user interface. And I feel like this one, this screen could have been bigger. Uh, nowadays, uh, you can have a fairly big screen. For example, Tesla or Polestar, Volvo, or uh, even the Mercedes. EQS, right? They have a fairly big uh, touchscreen, and uh, it's quite easy. Yeah, there was a Neo, yeah, the Korean, uh, yeah, the, 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 yeah, Neo or the, the uh, Chinese cars. They have a bigger screen, and they implemented a good system, so you don't have to dig too deep to find everything in there. So, yeah, but okay, but it, it's still fun to drive. That's <laughs> something I will always highlight. And what else is it? I think I'm just gonna end now because I talk for a lot. And um, yeah, the car is great in many, many ways. And uh, can I recommend this car? Yes. But uh, how do I put this? I cannot just blindly recommend it to you. Uh, I just say it's a good car. It's a car worth buying. But you, like I said, you have to try it. Because there could be things you don't like about it. And when it comes to the whole height thing here, I don't know how it works for tall people. And also, yeah, I should mention one last time, I've mentioned it before, but the head of display seems to be designed towards uh, medium sized or small uh, Asians. Uh, but then maybe for tall people, you will be further back and then you will still see the head of display. Yeah, that could be the case. I haven't tried it. Maybe I should try uh, with, uh, with Morgan, he's a tall friend. <laughs> But um, yeah, so um, is there anything else you want to know? Um, the region, by the way, can be very nice and strong. I like it also. Like when you have it in, in iPedal, you will see that it will region to standstill. One, this is true one pedal driving, the way the iPedal. But the, the only minus is that you have to enable iPedal or the, uh, every time you drive. It will default to level three if you set it to level three but it will not default to iPedal so um, yeah but okay, oh, 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 let me go this way so I think uh, that's it um, yeah Ionic 6 po possibly one of the most hyped cars in 2023 <laughs> yeah but um, yeah I think uh, that's gonna be it for now I hope you guys enjoyed this video as always thank you for watching and talk to you later